Dr. Ken here again with you. Uh, this is Lesson 12A, Part 5, our final part of Lesson 12A. And we're summarising what we've learnt. Got to remember what the last question is. Why do we want a low resistance earth wire? Or actually, why do we want a low fault loop? And the answer is to create a high enough fault current to trip the protective device. Now we want to create a high enough fault level that the, the protective device operates, but we don't want to cause such a high level of fault that you actually damage the device. You can actually go too far the other way. So we want enough current that the device trips within the specified time, and that we don't actually create so much fault current that the device can't cope with it. So we need to ensure that we do create a high enough fault current or fault loop impedance must be of a low value. Now here's a circuit breaker and what kind of information is indicated on the circuit breaker. So this is a Terasaki circuit breaker, just a single face circuit breaker, very stock standard. And you can have a look. I'll give you a few seconds to have a look. It tells us that it's um, Terasaki. It tells us it is 240 AC. We've got the on position marked, the off position. We have a thing, we have 10 amps or 10A telling us that this is the trip level or the protective trip level of the circuit breaker. Uh, DIN T just means that it's a DIN T circuit breaker. It clips into a particular shape and onto a particular DIN rail. We can see its part number displayed here. And then we have a funny number up here. So we have a current rating, which is the most important thing. And we have a fault level rating. You'll notice there's nothing here to tell us that what kind of trip curve or curve type this circuit breaker has. And if it doesn't tell us, then we have to assume it's a C curve trip. So without any other information, we're going to have to consider this a C curve. So. It's a C curve. Trip. Now, the fault level. What this 9,000 amps is telling us is that the electrical and mechanical strength of this circuit breaker is it will handle 9,000 amps amps for one second. If you try and put 9,000 amps through it for a second and a half, it will physically fail. It will heat up, it will melt, it will explode, depending on how much above 9,000 amps you go. So circuit breakers not only have their actual current rating, they also have a maximum fault level rating. And it's also important to realize that when we're designing our systems, that if we're using circuit breakers, they've also got to be able to handle the what we call the perspective fault level of the system. So we've got to have enough current to trip our 10 amps, being a C curve, remember, a C curve was four times rated current. So in this case, four times 10 is 40 amps. So we've got to make sure our loop impedance is low enough to create 40 amps if a fault was to occur. But if our system is capable of providing more than 40 amps, say 10,000 amps, then 
this circuit breaker would not be able to withstand the fault current that 10,000 amps would provide over one second. So earth fault loop impedance not only has a minimum, it also has a maximum. Here's a second circuit breaker. So this is a combination RCD. I'll give you a few seconds to have a look at the information that we have on this particular circuit breaker. So you might see at the top is a neutral and a line. Uh, there's an arrow because the connection has to follow the arrow, so that has to be the supply at the top. And if you see the arrow at the bottom, that has to be the load, so it's a particular way this has to be connected in a circuit. It tells us here that it is 20 amps. The C is telling us it's a C curve. Symbol telling it's AC. The button, you can see the T on the front, is the trip test. We know it's 240 volts AC rated. Then we've got this 30 milliamps and 3000 amps. So what are they about? The 30 milliamps is the trip leakage and the 3000 amps is the fault level. So this circuit breaker is can only handle 3000 amps fault level. The previous one was able to handle 9000 amps fault level. So here's the important stuff that we need to know. Trip curve is a C. Current rating is 20 amps. So being a C curve, Again, C curve means four times rated current, so four times 20 means we've got to get a minimum of 80 amps to flow to make this trip in under a second. So our loop impedance has to be low enough to create our 80 amps. But also, at the other end of the scale, our fault level can't exceed 3,000 amps. So quite often you'll do the fault loop impedance checks, and it can often well exceed our 80 amps, but if it also exceeds 3,000, then you're going to have trouble with this circuit breaker. This circuit breaker is not going to be able to electrically and mechanically withstand a fault current greater than 3,000 amps for one second. As I mentioned before, the 30 milliamps is the protection level that the earth leakage circuit breaker is at. So if we have any leakage current here between line and neutral of more than 30 milliamps, the circuit breaker will trip. So there's just two circuit breakers to give you a quick idea of what's on the face of a circuit breaker, what it can tell us, and how we can use that information. Here's our table again from um, AS3017. And I've just put this here to remind you that circuit breakers come in Bs, Cs, and D's. Fuses are all grouped together over here. And this particular table tells us the maximum values of resistance for different components within the loop depending on the size of your active, the size of your earth, and the protective devices current rating. The one that we just looked at 
with a current rating of 20 amps. So assuming that was being used on a final sub-circuit and uh, we had two and a half square mil for the active and the earth was also two and a half square mil at 20 amps and we're using a C-type circuit breaker we would be looking in here and if we're looking at the whole loop the protective the phase and the protective earth combined the whole loop combined is this one so everything would have to be less than one ohm so this next uh, little part is just an, another uh, way of uh, simple revision and you can see here here's our good old three phase transformer and our current starts here and goes up we have some kind of protective device these days more often than not protective device something like a uh, circuit breaker we have a load and protecting that load is a protective earth so encircling the load so if something was to fail between the active and the device it's designed so it will fail to the protective earth the whole idea mean, um, means that at this point here something called the touch potential get my C right touch potential never gets above whoops 50 volts keeping it safe and if this is well bonded to earth and our neutral is connected with the MEN the reality is we would hope that our protective earth never gets beyond getting up to a couple of volts of touch potential but 50 is the absolute maximum so the current flows through here down into the protective earth through the protective earth back to the neutral to the MEN through the MEN and back to the transformer hopefully creating enough fault current so the current path includes the supply transformer we just looked at the supply transformer the distribution system that's the cables leading to and from the transformer the mains that's the coming from the, the uh, supply authority to the point of attachment down into your protective device and then into your final sub circuit which includes the load so those are the main constituent parts of the earth fault loop itself so uh, table b51 maximum circuit length uh, this process is used to calculate the maximum circuit length taking into consideration the following the rating and type of the protective device the cross-sectional area of the active cross-sectional area of the earth conductor and the root length of the final sub-circuit a variation of this process can be used to determine the value of the um, FSC's e impedance and for 
the sorry and prove the earth conduct continuity I'll get it out eventually so using table b521 again to summarize we have z or impedance external and we have impedance internal basically we have no control over the impedance external and normally the supply authority will provide information of what they expect the impedance to be at the point of supply and then after that it's up to you as the electrician to calculate the internal impedance and work out the final full loop current. So what we're saying here in this little formula, the Z internal is 0.8 or 80% of the perspective uh, voltage drop. The voltage at the supply, which is VO, and the current from the supply. There will always be more than 80% of the nominal voltage. So we'll be safe to be able to use the calc at 80%. So that was just a quick summary of the way we calculate the fault loop uh, using method one, which we originally showed you. So I hope you've enjoyed our lessons in AC fault loop, which range from lesson 12A, part 0, through to this last part, part 5.